Thank you all for being here and welcome to the 2016 NCAA Division I Wrestling Championship. Should be an exciting weekend and we do welcome you on behalf of the NCAA and Hofstra and Madison Square Garden. So it, it should be a real treat. We have uh, five athletes as you can see up here today and we'll get you to ask them some questions here in a moment. We have Nick Wasowski from North Carolina State, Alex Deringer from Oklahoma State, Zane Rutherford from Penn State, Nishan Garrett from Cornell, and Kyle Snyder from Ohio State. A couple of procedural things before we start. Please be sure, uh, because we're having this recorded by ASAP Sports and they're in a remote location, so when you have a question, raise your hand and wait for someone to hand you the microphone. Introduce yourself so they know who it is asking the question, and please direct your question specifically to one of the athletes instead of saying anybody, if you will. That will really, really be a help. So. Raise your hand, make sure you have the mic, give your ID, and then specific questions. If you have a follow-up and you need to come back to that same athlete, that's fine too. First, I'm just going to ask each of the five to give a, give a brief statement about uh, wrestling the NCAA championships in the nation's most historic arena, Madison Square Garden. We'll start with you, Nick. Okay. It's, uh, it's an honor to wrestle here. It's, um a home state of mine, so come back home state my last tournament. It's, uh, it's a special place, and I have a lot of people coming out, so really um, looking forward to it a lot. Yeah, it's my senior year, so it's going to be cool to go out like this. You know, it's uh, obviously the most historic uh, uh, place to our arena in the world, so it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And uh, you know, I'm going for my third title, and uh, I'm just going to try to go out with a big bang. So. Same. I mean, this place is awesome. Uh, I was already out there and checked out the checked out the arena a little bit, so just looking forward to having fun with it. Yeah, sure. yeah. Every everybody said it pretty pretty well. Um, it's exciting to to be here. It's my it's my my, my fourth time wrestling at at Madison Square Garden, so uh, the excitement is is awesome. The the environment's great, and uh, it, people are people are going, people are ready to go, and so it gets you really pumped up. Yeah, I'm very excited to compete here. I've never wrestled at Madison Square Garden, so it's going to be exciting to go out there and compete anytime you can wrestle in front of thousands of fans. It's very exciting and something that I look forward to. Okay, we'll open it up to specific questions for the specific athletes. If you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, it's Mike Finn from Wind Magazine. Uh, Nick, this will be a question for both Nick and Kyle. It's fortunate we have both of you guys here. I a lot of people expect to see you at the end of this tournament. This is first of all for Nick. What were your thoughts when you first heard that Kyle was coming back and he was going into a weight class? How many matches have you had a chance to see him watch? Talk about the success he's had in what he's been doing. Um, he's 6 and out, so I think that, that speaks for that. Um, but. When I, when I first heard about it, I was like, okay, well, it's, a, it's another challenge. I've overcome challenges before. Uh, I talked to my coaches and then people on my, my staff, so we, we changed some things up. But um, overall, like, we, were, we were on a pretty solid track to begin with. So if you want to be the best in, on Saturday night, well, you've got to be a quality opponent. So you know, you're not going to find five easy guys to walk through. So having a guy like that on the other side, but there's four guys before then. But um, if, again, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. So right there. One more follow-up about facing Kyle. Obviously, he's affected with that little single. Do you think about you have to stop that, or is there something else that you have to stop? Uh, I think there's more than one shot he had, so I'll be ready for multiple <laughs> shots. But um, there's there's things you work on in practice, and you you know you obviously watch film on guys, and, and we've wrestled before, so there's a, there's a you know you got an idea of, of what the guy feels like. So there's some things, but other things, you know, I, I'm good at different skills too. So. And for Kyle, for you coming back, you've wrestled more internationally. You've done folk style this year. Have you done anything overseas to mirror what you're going to be doing in this tournament this weekend? Have I done anything overseas? Yes, any of those events that you've done overseas or your training that would help prepare you for this? Well, I mean, I've just been wrestling a lot, so I think that's going to help prepare me for the competition that I'm going to have here. Um, I haven't really wrestled too much folk style. I've been training mostly freestyle still since I've came back, but I think wrestling the type of opponents that I've been able to compete against this year, some of the best guys in the world at my weight class, some guys that have wrestled heavyweight before and done well is going to uh, 
help me compete well at this tournament and just focusing on the same things that I've been focusing on, improvement, trying to open up more and wrestle freely. Next question, right up front. Yeah, that, this is a follow-up with Kyle. Um, you um, yourself, Gary. Gary Abbott with USA Wrestling. Um, that, obviously, when you came out of Olympic red shirt, things changed in your plan. And I was curious, going into this tournament, has um, your freestyle affected or helped your uh, uh, folk style and vice versa? Has wrestling some folk style had any effect on your freestyle? Well, I haven't wrestled. I've wrestled the six matches in folk style, but... In practice, I only wrestle freestyle with the guys pretty much, so um, I think that just wrestling is wrestling, and I'm going to learn and get better in positions, whether it's freestyle or folk style, and um, top-bottom is something. I've never really been that great on top. Like, I've never had a pin before, I think, so not really that good on top, but bottom has always been something that I'm pretty naturally good at, so I haven't worked on that too much, but I think... Like I said earlier, going overseas, I've learned a lot against the competition that I've wrestled against, and I think it's made me a better wrestler. Next question. Yes, in the back. Uh, Nick Forrester was... Good. Nick Forrester of Sports Illustrated. Uh, Nashon, you said that this is your fourth time wrestling at the Garden. How does this venue compare to other venues you've competed in? Um, I think it's a... I would say that's probably a little more intimate, just because I think um, the places I've actually uh, wrestled before at nationals I, are a lot. I think they're really a lot bigger. And uh, when I came here, it's, it seemed it seemed to be like more compact, and that there's a lot more people like you know fitted in. And uh, yeah, so that's that. It seems you're closer to people. You're you're closer to the people. You're closer to the crowd. You're closer to the excitement. Um, everything is. Uh, yeah, you just seem closer, and you, you really feel you don't feel distant from from the competition or, or um, yeah, anything else. So. Follow up. Um, does that impact your wrestling at all? Oh yeah, um, I believe. I for me, I, I love feeling like I'm I can compete and and wrestle to the best of my ability for specific people and and um, and just put on a show for people so uh, the closer people are and the, and the more they like I see them I can like see them face to face almost like the the better I feel like I'm like oh wow like I'm actually perform I'm it's a performance you know and I, and, I, and it feels great next yes I'm um, Mitch Rupert from the Williams Sports Sun Gazette Zane, you, you took a redshirt year last year after finishing uh, as an All-American, your, your true freshman year. What were your goals that you wanted to accomplish last year during that redshirt, and can you see that it's helped you here during your sophomore season? Um, yeah, my goals during my redshirt season were just, um, you know, train, train harder and, and uh, you know, pick up stuff from guys that, um, you know, when you're, in a, when you're in the folk style season, you might not get to get your hands on guys as much as and think about learning technique you kind of get stuck in a rut sometimes and you gotta kind of be be uh, conscious of that so um I mean I was just working on getting better on my feet and working better in all positions really and I, I think it's definitely freestyle definitely helps with, with uh, folk style for sure as a quick follow-up you've already had pretty good success against the other top seeded guys in the tournament where does that put your confidence coming into the tournament I mean, this is the NCAA tournament, so you know everybody's going to be going to be going for that national title in your bracket. Doesn't really matter who it is. So um, I just I just I don't think it really impacts me at all. I think I'm just focused on having fun and enjoying the enjoying this this process, this tournament, and having fun with the year. And this is this is the, the end of the year, so looking forward to having fun again. Next in the back, quarterback. back. Yeah, Jason Bryan from Mad Talk Online. This question's for Alex. Uh, kind of a two-part question. You're an exciting guy to watch wrestle. You go out there and you look like you're having fun. How much fun is, is going out there every time competing and, and being able to put on a show, put up big points? And also has the 
discussion with Kyle and Nick kind of taking the pressure off of you, whereas most years you would kind of be the guy people were focusing on is, okay, you know, number one guy, this is the guy we're here to watch. Has that taken the pressure off? Um, no, not really. I mean, I really don't. I try. I'm a pretty relaxed wrestler. I don't really don't feel much pressure. You know, I always stay pretty relaxed. But uh, yeah, I like to go out there for the fans. A lot of this, a lot of this is because of the fans. I, like, I mean, for wrestling, it just makes it more exciting for the fans if you go out there and just try to score points. And I think it promotes wrestling a lot more. And that's one reason I like to do that. And also because uh, I mean, I don't like to go out there and just you know win a close match. I like to go out there and score a lot of points. And uh, you know, if I don't get bonus points, I'm not happy with myself. So. And I think that's another reason why I do do it, you know, because if I, if I don't get bonus points, I'm just, I'm, I'm not pleased at all, and I go back to the room and I work on it. Quick follow-up, where do you think this is, where a third title would cement you in the uh, the history of the great wrestlers at Oklahoma State? Uh, hopefully one of the greatest. I mean, um, like I heard someone t tell me the other day, a coach Smith, I said I'd be top five, so that's that was pretty cool to hear. If you're... If you don't get to keep up with all of college wrestling, uh, Alex has not lost a match since January of 14. So he has a what, 78 streak, is that right there? 78 match winning streak going. So we're looking for notes like that. Next question. How's it going, Bobby Locke from um, Beat the Streets and uh, News Tribune Online in Boston? Uh, question for Kyle. So you went out and won the world championships uh, back in August. What was it like going back to college at Ohio State and uh, being a sophomore and getting ready to wrestle again in college? Well, the first semester I was planning on taking an Olympic redshirt, so I actually didn't have any classes. So I didn't really go on campus much. My apartment's like 50 yards from the wrestling room, so I really just walked back and forth from the wrestling room multiple times every day and really wasn't on campus that much to see everybody. But the second semester was fun. Uh, you know, coming out and telling everybody I was going to wrestle again, and that part was fun, but then having to take classes wasn't as much fun, <laughs> and I know it's something that you have to do, and I try my best to do well in school, but the wrestling is my favorite part. Well, to, to follow up, uh, the kids on campus, do, do they know you're a world champ, do they, do they call you champ, and how, how is that, what's that like, and you, even around town? Some, some of the people on campus know I am uh, a world champion, and that's pretty cool. You'll be walking uh, to a football game or just walking around campus, and people will ask for pictures and stuff like that. But most of the time, I can just walk around, and people don't know who I am, which is fine, too. So. Thank you. Uh, Richard, Emmel. Richard Emmel, USA Wrestling. For Nick, um, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the legacy you could leave as a three-time champ, heavyweight, you know, one of the best of all time. Um, can you talk about the ending that could shape up for yourself, you know, in your home state, how important it is for you wrestling in your home state, uh, wrestling in Madison Square Garden, uh, you know, the big lights, the big stage, quality opponent, potentially the, the biggest match of the tournament. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Uh <coughs> I, I think about it sometimes when I'm in training and, and just at home and other times, but uh, there's a there's a path to it, and it's something I look forward to having the opportunity to do. It's really special to when people say like, you know, you win this next tournament, you could be one of the best ever in the weight class. So especially with the people that I have watched and compete in this weight class and overall in the NCAA. But um, what you talked about being here in my in my home state of New York and and against potentially against a quality guy like that. Um, it, it just makes everything better, you know. It's like you see two best guys go at it for the last time, and you find out who's the better one. So stuff like that, you know. You, as a fan, you look forward to, I think. But also as an athlete, to, to really test yourself and see what's what you have within you, to see where you're really at. And um, I think something like that tells a lot about the person you are. So. Uh, Gary Abbott with USA Wrestling again. Alex, um, you had an opportunity to wrestle in Times Square last year. Uh, how has that experience, I know Kyle also has wrestled there, how does that experience help you when you come back to the Big Apple for an important event like this? I mean, it was one of the coolest experiences I've ever, I've ever been in, so it was, you know, be able to wrestle outside in Times Square was awesome. And obviously, you know, wrestling in Madden Square Garden, it's, it's going to be a very cool experience. And, uh, you know, I'm used, I'm used to the big stage, you know, I've been doing it since I was a little kid, so, 
you know, it's all the same thing to me. It's all just another match, and uh, you know, I try to look at, I try to be pretty calm about it. We had three former NCAA champions in here early, and they were asked about this. So I want to toss it to these guys right quick since uh, the Beat the Streets has come up. I'll, I'll start with uh, Nation. Events like Beat the Streets, Grapple in the Garden, uh, the Grapple on the Gridiron at Iowa City last November. How much do you think these events can help collegiate wrestling and international wrestling in the United States? Um, I would say that a lot. It would, it would help a lot. Um, just because for wrestling to be, um, you know, to put so much heart and so much dedication and so much time uh, for our guys and for them to, you know, we don't do it for, we don't do it for, you know, the, the fame, we don't do it for the fortune, we don't do it for those types of things, but, um, you know, it's, it's nice to be noticed and it's nice to, uh, to, to be, uh, you know, the work to be appreciated and I don't think that it's, I think it's something that, again, that we don't look for, uh, the appreciation for it. Uh, we don't look for that, but I believe that um, you know these kind of these kind of productions definitely uh, kind of point point towards a little bit and say like, wow, this is this is something that um, that is it's a it's an amazing sport and it's something that that teaches kids values and, and characteristics that they wouldn't get in in other sports and um, and so yeah, the fact that yeah, the fact that um, it just puts wrestling out on a bigger stage is is pretty incredible. If anyone wants to follow that with the others, you can and go to a totally different question. Anyone? Yes, sir, over here in the corner. Yeah. This is JP Pearson from Black Shoe Diaries. We got a question for Zane. We've seen you grow the sport of wrestling just within the Penn State fan base, really on the strength of your physicality and the way you wrestle. I was wondering if you could tell us what your opinion of the nickname Z Pin is. Um, I don't, I don't know, I don't really, I don't really care, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't affect me at all, um, if the fans like it, they think it's cool, it's cool with me, sure, yeah. <laughs> this side's been awfully quiet over here, do you have anything? Yes sir, front, front row. Christian Piles, Flow Wrestling. Questions for Kyle. Um, Kyle, a year ago you, you lose three matches in your true freshman year. You have a runner-up finish. A month later you beat Jake Varner. Another month you're on the world team. To what do you attribute your your jump? Is it is freestyle just a better situation for you, or did you make massive leaps as a wrestler in, those, in that short amount of time? I would say it's a little bit of both. Um, I do like freestyle more. I like wrestling freestyle more, so that might be a reason. And my style probably suits it a little bit better, so I think that might be a reason why I have more success in freestyle. But I also feel like I, I grew as a wrestler a lot after the NCAAs. And even during the season, I was growing as a wrestler, but you take a, f a few losses, and that's kind of just the way it goes. And But after after the season, kind of just talked to some of the people I trust the most and reevaluated the way I think about the sport and instead of I think I was able to wrestle more freely, wrestle open in the competitions where you saw that I had success and with that I was able to learn more and become a better wrestler. Just a quick follow up. The the weight change, how has that do you think that's played a role? Has that helped you um, maybe open up a little bit more? 197 wasn't too hard of a cut when I wrestled in it last year. I, I had it under control, and even be before the season, I was dieting to make sure that um, I could make the weight easily by NCAAs. But I like wrestling at, I would say 213 is probably like pretty much the perfect weight class for me. And then heavyweight uh, isn't too bad most of the time. Coom was really big, so he was hard to wrestle. and. My forearms got tired when I was wrestling him, holding onto his leg and stuff like that. But I wrestle good heavyweights in the room, uh, like I say often, Terrell Delognev and our, our heavyweight Nick Tavanello is they're both tough guys, and I get used to wrestling the heavyweights uh, with them in the room. But yeah, so 285 is it, it's a good weight class for me. Front row, right here. 
pass that mic. Uh, this will be a uh, Mike Finn from Wayne again. This will be a follow-up for his uh, for Kyle. Unfortunately, your last match in some ways was not one that you expected. You did get pinned. Can you talk about what that experience did? I mean, a lot of people thought maybe you needed the break after because of the way you lost. Can you describe that night at all? What do you remember? Yeah, I can describe the night. I remember the night <laughs> very well. Um, yeah, I mean. It was hard, especially, it was kind of a mix of emotions because we won the team title last year. Some of my best friends won NCAA titles. And you don't want to be jealous of them. You want to be happy for them. But just as an individual, you want the same thing. So it's kind of, it was kind of hard for me to be around them, even though I am super happy that we got it done as a team. I'm super happy for the individuals who got it done now. It was just hard to be in that moment with them because... I was hurting pretty bad, but um, I mean the rest of the night really, really wasn't that fun. Coach Ryan made me come up and speak to all the Buckeye fans who came to our like meeting get together. That really wasn't that fun for me to do, but I had to do it. And uh, I would say I, I did. I learned a decent amount from that match. Didn't really. Um, I wouldn't say it, it catapulted me to what I did during the summer, but I definitely. I, I learned a lot. It made me real reevaluate re the way I think about the sport. It made me assess my wrestling more, and I, I got better in that underhook position too. So <laughs> I'm not going to get thrown that way. Hopefully, again anytime soon. Thanks for that question, Mike. I know Kyle really appreciated that. <laughs> that One final question. We need to wrap up. Yes, sir. Right at the front. Ah, yeah, that's for for Alex. Um, it's sort of a two-part question. We, we've got like a we've got a really tight Hodge Trophy race. All you guys sitting up there, you know, what do you think? You're a senior going out. How important is the Hodge Trophy to you? And can you tell me why you think you deserve the Hodge Trophy? You know, I think a couple guys up here deserve it too. But you know, we all we all had some pretty good, really good seasons. But uh, you know, obviously, if you, you win a national title, I mean, if you get a Hodge Trophy, you win a national title. So. But then again, you're also getting bonus points, not only for yourself, but for the team. And, uh, you know, that's what I look for. I'm always looking for bonus points. And just like these guys up here, you know, it um, makes it more exciting for yourself and, and for the fans. So, Thank all of you for your participation. If you need to go outside and get some one-on-ones, you can. We do have coaches coming in here in just a few minutes.